Yes, it is. Basically, it's from the Australian. I just wanted to ask you, on your quote where you say, eyes, we need to have eyes on men in a different way, you did give a couple of examples through your speech. I'm just wondering if you can expand on that, um, particularly in the home, but also within business, within workplaces, and within the parliament. Just on the parliament, today we have uh, new legislation on an independent parliamentary standards commissioner, um, I hope that's its right name, um, where um, it will make recommendations uh, to politicians on poor behaviour and how to treat the poor behaviour. Ultimately, it's up to what's called the Privileges Committee, um, senior politicians to decide what sanctions to impose. Is that a good idea in, in your opinion or should that sanction regime ultimately be independent of politicians? So if I can go start with the beginning of your question about what I mean by eyes on men, if I can go back to what I talked about at the beginning about passive language. We, most of our service system has been designed to move women around. We really started the you know, response to domestic violence was, was the establishment of women's refuges. So we, what, what, do we, what do we do? We, we move women around. One of, the, one of the most appalling examples I heard about that was in Cairns when I met with one of the high risk teams there and they were talking about a a, a bloke who wasn't really very visible to much of the system and what they knew was that when they, when they pieced it together, five women and their children over a period of time had needed to be flown out of Cairns to make them safe rather than addressing what needed to happen around that, man, that man's behaviour. So much of our system, is that's what I mean, is designed around eyes on women. Women have much more help-seeking behaviour. Women are much more visible to the system. Men often don't, if they put up their hand and say, I'm concerned about my behaviour, as I said, there's not much around to respond to them. So, and where we have seen some of the best successes in keeping women safe is when you talk to the high, then there are high-risk versions of high-risk teams all over the country, it's when they know and they've got an eye on the men, not just what are we doing about, we do risk assessments on women. We talk about how do we help manage women's risk and safety. We don't do risk assessments in the same way about men and their behaviour. So I mean it very practically, actually, when I say eyes on men, um, and, that we, and that we need to think about our system in ways that... Uh, sometimes I get asked when we, that, that, that are we talking about more men are we, is there a risk that we're moving funding away from women, that we're taking eyes off the, the, the critical need for response services and the services and systems for women? My response to that is unless we start doing that, we're not keeping women safe. If the objective is to keep women and children safe, then we need to be doing the work with men more than we are. Karen. 